Rang the one and only, shukar alhamdulillah, shahzad asan khan. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope and pray that everybody out there is doing wonderfully well and that you're ready to kickstart your day with us. But first thing first, I hope that all of you guys are feeling wonderful. I hope that you guys are looking forward to your day. I hope that each and every individual in your family is actually going to have a great day as well with a lot of health and a lot of wealth. And may Allah bestow upon all of us you know, all sorts of blessings that we ask for from him, you know, day in, day out, and may all of us live a healthy life and that too amongst the loved ones that we would love to share, you know, whatever we have with them. So please make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you have this concept of sharing. But before the concept of sharing, I would always reiterate upon the concept of gratitude. You know, you really need to kind of thank Allah Almighty because there can be situations in life, you know, and there, there, there are so many different situations for people from different walks of life that there are times when we feel that, okay, you know, I don't think that I can get through this. Okay, I think that I'm a little hopeless. You know, ladies and gentlemen, hope, being hopeless is something which is a crime and everybody needs to realize it as a crime. And please make sure that every single day, whatever you have to yourself, whatever opportunity you have to yourself, you seize it and you make the best use of it. But before, you know, I kind of move on towards that, there's this one important day to day which we are observing over here at PTV wall and we always love to do that you know to make sure that we uh, you know spread a lot of awareness amongst people amongst our viewers in 46 or 47 different countries ladies and gentlemen today happens to be the day of social injustice as well so social justice day is being observed all over the globe by 180 plus member states of the united nations now imagine when we speak of social justice why do we have to kind of talk about it in today's time is because of the fact that social injustices occur because of me and you, because of the governments, because of the people, because of how people are doing things, you know, irregularly. I think that's something that we really need to address because on the day of social justice, we really need to address all of those common issues, for example, poverty, for example, injustices within our own society and how we can fix that. So me and you need to be those agents of change to make sure that anybody and everybody around us is not suffering from social injustices. And how can we do that? Well, okay, I'm going to give you an example today. I feel like a professor without Haja, but Haja, get well soon. And we would certainly want you to be over here as well, you know, so that you can share what you think about it. So imagine that, you know, in, our, in every household over here in Pakistan, we do see how we have domestic health. Now imagine that the kind of food that you consume, you know, as being the owner of the house or being the boss of your domestic staff, what you do is that, you know, you will certainly see, not in every household, I cannot be generic today, but imagine that we will see disparity amongst the kind of food is being consumed. Now this is a huge social injustice. Why can't you feed those people with what you eat as well? So ladies and gentlemen, I think that we really need to be the agents of change. Number two, now where I spoke about how we really need to kind of seize the opportunity. Imagine that there's this gentleman who's got cerebral palsy and 75% and of his body does not work how our bodies work. So imagine this, this amazing gentleman, uh, his name is being written in the books of history for the years to come because he happens to be the first person in the world with a 76% disability who has managed to finish a marathon of 42.195 kilometer in a course of an impressive 5 hours, 50 minutes and 51 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, the name of this amazing person or hero happens to be Alex Roca Campillo. So Campillo, congratulations to you for showing the world how strong you can be given whatever circumstances you are in. And this is exactly the true picture which I wanted to share with you today. But now the kind of conversation that we're going to have, I think I'm really excited about it. And the sole purpose of me being excited about it is that usually, you know, whenever we, we see different sorts of morning shows, you know, we will talk about entertainment, we'll talk about drama, we'll talk about film. But there's really any uh, morning show out there which will talk about literature and decolonization. And this kind of blew me out. I was like, 
wow, if that's the kind of conversation I'm going to have, I was so excited. You know, it's very evident on my face as well. But to talk about this, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've been joined by somebody who happens to be an author herself. She happens to be a poetess, a writer. We're very lucky that we have been joined by Miss Madhya Asalan. Hello, Asalaam Alaikum. Good morning. How are you feeling today? Wa Alaikum Asalaam. I am happy to see you. And congratulations on um, having this topic for discussion today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, the, the pleasure is all ours that you've taken our time and that you're here with us and that we'll be sharing such a vast topic yeah, you know yeah. it, it was literally challenging for me that mm -hmm. okay you know in 30 minutes how am i going to wrap it up how am i going to start the conversation so let's get started with it now first things first i would want you to mm -hmm. make my viewers understand what mm -hmm. decolonization is mm -hmm. and when we are to talk about literature and decolonization mm -hmm. why are we connecting literature with decolonization mm -hmm. so may it be pre or post colonialism please go ahead Okay, so before I start, I would like to first link it with social injustice. Okay, sure. Okay, so um, uh, social injustice is one of the causes, of, um, uh, products of uh, decolonization uh, in literature. Okay. Um, we have... Um, Faiz Ahmed Faiz Sahib, who talked about socialism, who uh, talked about Marxism, who talked about injustices um, occurring throughout um, each sector of our life. And yep. then especially he spoke up for the labor class. And so did Kefi Azmi Sahib and worked throughout his life to, you know, achieve social Mandel justice. Spoke about social and the, yes, yeah. I'm going to come. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, y you know, um, decolonization is the time period when uh, we got rid of our um, Gora masters. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that would be the rightest way I think I, I could explain it to the audience. But I, and you know, th thank you yes. so much. You know, mm -hmm. So I'm going to kind of interject in between. You know, so yes. imagine, do you think mm -hmm. that we are above the masters or you know, the kind of mastery that we had in our region? Do mm -hmm. you think that we are out and above, do you think that we are mm. beyond that or do you think that we still, you know, somewhere in our frames of mind, you know, we might still be a little colonized? Okay, so I'm going to be very hopeful here and we are resisting, <laughs> okay? okay? Uh, but yes, we, we cannot break the shackles of decolon uh, colonization as such. Why? Mm -hmm. Because our official system, our governmental system, uh, the lang official language, yep. of course, yeah. you know, the language of our um, schooling and education, True. that is all not ours. Yeah. So but we we, we have not decolonized. The country obviously. <laughs> 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 That's it, not yeah. ours. So yeah. so we we haven't decolonized. Okay. So actually, know, in so actual so sense, but yeah. the hopeful thing is that there is an actual and gradual and somewhere um, really fast um, progress in in breaking these barriers. Okay. So so you, so you know let's let's talk about Hong Kong let's talk mm -hmm. about Pakistan let's mm -hmm. talk about India mm -hmm. you know let's talk about all these countries mm -hmm. in out of you know all of those countries which mm -hmm. were colonized mm -hmm. And now, mm -hmm. you know, post-colonialism, mm -hmm. which country do you see mm -hmm. certainly has their own forte, own culture, own language? Do you, do you, do you witness such a country now? Um, undoubtedly India. Okay. Undoubtedly Bangladesh. Okay. Um, Hong Kong is almost there. Okay. Um, <laughs> I do not want to sound pessimistic, but we have a long way to go. Yeah, and we will certainly, you know, we yes. are at it and we will make sure that, you know, that we reach over there. Okay, so yes. now I think that we have established... Uh, now let's connect literature and you know pre or post colonialism as well. Now mm -hmm. imagine that you know mm -hmm. for a person for example if mm -hmm. I was living you know in a country or in a state mm -hmm. or in a province which mm -hmm. was colonized mm -hmm. certainly the impacts are going to be there as well and the kind of literature that will be produced mm -hmm. because they're not going to allow to to be for any other literature to be produced so mm -hmm. it's more of praise of mm -hmm. you know oh, wow you know this is so mm -hmm. amazing and what not. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. So how do you see you know literature and the writers and the authors you know, during the time of colonialism and mm -hmm. then post-colonialism. Okay, so do, during the <coughs> time Sorry. of colonialism, uh, we see Musadda Sehali. Okay. We see Sir Sayed's work. Yep. We see Gal's work pre and post. Yeah. Uh, we see Ghalib, we see Akbar, uh, Akbar al Abadi Sahab, we see Mir. They all <laughs> resisted in their own way. And there was always a nostalgia. There was always a um, link with the roots. So, um, but at the same time, uh, the language was their own as well. So but again, you know, when, when, when I was talking to someone about language being their own, yeah. um, they said, well, um, it came, um, uh, the language came from Persia, the, yep. the language of Mughals. 
True. So again, there was an impact of imperialism. Right. But then, you know, you have to have an expression. And our Urdu became the yeah, but lingua. That, but don't you think, because imagine, I still remember that, you know, when my grandfather actually moved from lingua India to Pakistan post partition, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, the only degree which was being recognized mm -hmm. was Munshi Fazal. And Munshi mm -hmm. Fazal is actually happens to be, for everybody who does mm -hmm. not know, mm -hmm. is a degree, you know, in, in Persian language, mm -hmm. right? So. Mm -hmm. This might be mm -hmm. because of the fact that they wanted to have that global reach to their work, mm -hmm. you know, so because if you are mm -hmm. during the time mm -hmm. times of colonialism, you yes. would certainly want your work to kind of go out in the yeah, world yes. so that it has more impact. Do yes. you agree to that? Um, I see, language always has an impact and imperialism does, of okay. course. So Persia was a very strong country with a lot of literary work produced, uh, with a lot of scientific work produced true, there, right? True, true. So it was basically... Um, the light in Asia, All right. right? Before the Westerners, the Goras, the Britishers uh, captured us, All right. right? So um, uh, their work when it reached Hindustan, uh, which was Pakistan and India yep. and Bangladesh, yep. um, th their work um, was then not only read and um, studied okay. but then you know it developed an another language of its own the lingua franca that w that came into being which was hindi that was persian that was english Urdu. that was turkish and you know that became lingua franca True. right so um uh, we were just talking uh, you you just asked me which country has it, its own forte after decolonization and i said india and one of the reasons is that when they speak english they speak it as their own. Uh, they, they are no, we are right. more, actually, EV Pakistanis are more concerned about the structure, about the vocabulary and how, you know, we think thousands of times before asking, putting up a question in English <laughs> or replying in English. <laughs> and we, 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 no, 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 we do, we yeah. do. No, as, 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 yes, generally we do. Uh, but if, if you look at that part of India, uh, the subcontinent part, um, it, it has developed its own English. You know, they I, do I not fear, that, and then they have developed English literature as, their, uh, uh, as a genre of literature in India. We have not recognized English as a genre of uh, in, uh, literature. literature as yet. Exactly. But, but thank you so, so much. You know, I think that w what we're trying to kind of refer to over mm -hmm. here is that, for example, now we're the only English channel in the country. Mm -hmm. And certainly we're not putting up any accents or whatsoever, yes. you know. So we make sure that, you know, that we have... I was not Pakistan talking about the accents. No, no, I, I, I truly but get that, you know, mm -hmm. to recognize the literature aspect yes. of it. And there yes. are a lot of people who are working on it as well. Yes. But now let's, let me bring you down to where you spoke about so many, um, you know, poets, you mm -hmm. know, who actually mm -hmm. were during the time of colonialism mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. wrote and how they were recognized. Can mm. you share a few couplets, you know, from, yes. from, from, from their books or, you know, from their poetry so that okay. we can actually understand mm. how there was a change in the literature during colonialism mm. and then post-colonialism as well. So please go mm. ahead. You know, during colonialism, mm. Mm. what were the writings? Let's go. Okay. So during colonialism, uh, Iqbal said, uh, gave the falsafa of Khudi. Okay. To recognize yourself. True, true. true. Um, Akbar el Abadi talked about common people. Right. Exactly. Um, uh, then um, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan developed uh, the university, Aligarh. Right. True, true, true. So these are all examples of the colonial era. You know, that when the resistance the were, that we need was there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, yes. that's true. Yes. And then the uh, the uh, partition part took place. And there's a beautiful letter of Ellis to uh, Fais Sahab. Go ahead. And and um, if you allow me, I'm all know, ears. So and. Um, it touches your heart and it, 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 it fits in all situation now with Pakistan. And she says, Dearest, haven't heard from you yet, but Tasi tells me that he had a telegram from Chris to say you have arrived. The unexpected disturbances for fortunately did not materialize, but there has been a new flare up in the last two days involving 13 deaths. Wow. These were, however, individual cases, no general panic. To make up for this, there has been a terrible fresh outbreak in Amritsar and conditions there, I am told, are utterly indescribable. Indes the Red Cliff Award came up and you must have seen it. The Muslims have got their Pakistan. The Hindus and Sikhs, they're divided Punjab and Bengal. But I have yet to meet a person, Muslim, Hindu or Sikh who feels enthusiastic about the future. 
I can't think of any country whose people felt so miserable on the eve of freedom and liberation. Both morally and politically, the British could not have hoped for a greater triumph. And imagine that just the last sentence. Yeah. You know, British it just says could it not have hoped for a greater triumph. Imagine, imagine that, you know, even then, you know, during colonialism, so you're getting out of it as well, and they still have this essence of that Raj onto you as well, yes, right? Yes. You know, that's yes. what it speaks about. Now, yes. if we are to kind of revert back to our poetry, yes. now imagine the poetry of those times. Please share so, a few Shazad, comments. I just, to add to your conversation uh, and what you just said, um, so literature is not just poetry or the novels or the fiction or the, uh, you know, travelogues that we write, but it's the, even the advertisements, you know? True. Um, um, the, 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 the common language, the newspaper articles and features, the letters that have been written. Exactly. Okay? So that is why Go I ahead. English. Okay. Um, so, Fez says, in Subhe Azadi, he says, Ye daag daag ujala, ye shab guzida seher. Ye daag daag ujala, ye shab guzida seher. Wo intizar tha jiska, ye wo seher to nahi hai. Kya baat hai? Uske baad, uh, uh, Fez, um, after that, he says, Hum dekhenge, which is great resistance. Lazenge, lazim hai ke hum bhi dekhenge. So, you know, great resistance. True, true, true. And then Faraz goes on and he says, Mera kalam nahi kirdar us muhafiz ka. You know how, how pertinent it is in today's world, in today's true. Pakistan. मेरा कलम नहीं किरदार उस मुहाफ़िस का जो अपने शहर को महसूर करके नास करे वाह 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 जो अपने शहर को महसूर करके नास करे मेरा कलम नहीं कासा किसी सुबक्सर का मेरा कलम नहीं कासा किसी सुबक्सर का जो गासिपों को फकीरों से सरफराज करें। वाह वाह वाह। so you know जो गाज़बों को कसीदों से सरफराज करें। This spoke about people for every yes, walk of life. For, uh, yes. And exactly now, I think what we really need to kind of and do then is you know if you remember Habib Jalib. Yeah, we do remember. Uh, obviously. You know, and and his dastur and he says मैं नहीं मानता मैं नहीं जानता you know, and I will do and say what is right. So that is the forte of literature and that is the forte of and the people the, no, who create this yeah. revolution and who brings about a, a revolution in the world. And, and more know? than the forte, I think that it's the role of literature, literature yes. that, you know, that wherever we stand today. So imagine, you know, because you very rightfully mentioned that all of those articles in the newspapers, even back then, you know, all those featured articles, all those advertisements, yeah. they've contributed yeah. towards each and every step of the movement of freedom that the people of Pakistan actually went through back then as well. Now, in addition to this, now when we see post-colonialism, because imagine I'm going to refer to, you know, how the British triumph can't get any better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to move on from there. Mm -hmm. You know, come down mm -hmm. to how it is our responsibility, how the literature of today actually mm -hmm. kind of poses us towards or mm -hmm. kind of directs us towards how we need to have this freedom when we think of things. How we certainly do not have to reflect upon the values that we gathered during the era of colonialism mm -hmm. and how we're getting better every single day within our own mindsets mm -hmm. to be more free, to be to be, you know, able to enjoy whatever we wanted to enjoy, to mm -hmm. cherish. And certainly do not put forward or across those values which we learned mm -hmm. or picked up during the times of colonialism. Okay, so this is a very, very important and interesting question and it will require a few lengthy answers. Sure, sure. Okay, so I will start with, um, see the decolonization developed or gave birth to this uh, intense, um, intense um, looking forward to know who you are. True. To find out who you are. Identity. Identity, you know. It gave birth to a lot of questions. Is English our language? Are we like um, the stereotyping that was um, during the colonialism and the imperialism or the Orientalism um, suggested few feminine uh, feminist ideas like you know a woman should be like um, peachy colored, like large eyes or mm. you know with this hair and that hair. So then um, it 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 probed questions into the minds of writers, into the minds of youth, it, uh, in the minds of scholars, that um, really, 
Is that our tradition? Is that our culture? Is that our language? And every language has an ethos, right? True, true, it has true. an ethos. And that ethos is the culture behind it. True. And that develops that language, exactly. that develops that literature. True, true, true. Right? So, one of the uh, biggest and uh, most um, uh, power oriented uh, outcome of decolonization was finding out who you are. Exactly. Have okay. you figured it out? Um, I, had, <laughs> I think we still I, have I, I've, I've had, no. Okay. <laughs> you asked me if I have? Yes, I have years ago figured wow. out. You wow. Know? I so think that's <laughs> wonderful. And this is exactly, do you think it is important for us to figure it out? And why do you think that it is important for us to figure it out? Okay. If you do not know yourself, how can you be honest with anything? Because we believe that, you know, we're how still on a journey, honest? you know, it's not about destiny. And if you're not honest, how can you work? work in any system and do you do you think that to be honest we really need to identify or know oh, yeah. that who we oh, are yeah. and embrace to be it honest yeah and to embrace it and what if we are you know, unable to embrace it as an individual if mm. i am to ask you what if i am un unable to embrace then, it? then um you are in living uh, you are living in pakistan you see it all around you exactly thank you so much for <laughs> saying that that's where i wanted to bring you as well and that's this is this is the job of an anchor person now very quickly mm. i'll come back to the point with you, you you know which you raised just right now while you were you were at it as well that how we really need to embrace it and whatnot. But there's this one piece of work which I would mm -hmm. love to share and it's by you. Oh, okay. And it says that uh, the title of the book happens to be Bhadu. You know, it's a, it's a weather over here, you know. And I you think can ask me a question about it. It's a season over here. You can here. ask me why I chose yeah, so, it. Yeah, I'm going to ask you. So by Madhya mm -hmm. Arslan, so why Bhadu? Okay. So everybody asks me that. And um, I tell everyone that I was born in India. Okay. In India means Indo-Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? My parents came from India. My, um, I am from this earth and I'm going to go in this earth, right? True. How can I separate myself from it? My second uh, very important logic is, um, we in, in Indo-Pak, in Punjabi calendar, we had 11 months. Yep. Have sorry, I should not use hat. Savan and in, in Bhadu, Jate, you know, and, and <laughs> can, so can on. Can you so name so all of these? Uh, all of these, no, not right now. Yeah, but okay. yes, I know. Okay. So eleven months out of all these eleven months, um, Bhadu is the only feminine month, right? <laughs> That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So and there's a very beautiful well, folk why is it story. a feminine month? How would we? How how do we know that this mm. month is a feminine month? Because that's how it's used in the language. Okay, in Punjabi yes, language. Yes. Okay, so that's the reference point. So to it as well. yes. Wow, that's wonderful. And the story behind it is yep. that uh, during Savan, during rain, rainy season, um, uh, the mother-in-laws would send their daughter-in-laws to their um, meccas, okay. like right, and uh, they they yes, go <laughs> right because they could work Relax because it was a nice yeah. uh, weather and everything. And during Bhado, they would call them back. Okay. And this was a time where uh, women used to feel claustrophobic, they were oppressed. Okay. And then, um, you know, the Bhadu altogether is, um, is a month of humidity. Uh, you right. can't breathe in Punjab. Yeah, a little bit, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not, I'm it's, talk, it's not like talking about, for you. yes, yes, no, not only, I'm not talking specifically about, but in, in uh, Islamabad, but in, in Punjab and in Karachi also, True. you know. So it was kind of a break from oppression from me. Wow, that, that, that was that's was a wonderful. break from oppression. And, and so, what did you write about in this book? Okay, I have written all the life experiences. Okay, I've uh, written about environment. I've written about politics. I've talked about uh, suicide bombers. How you uh, feel? Yeah, um, I, it, there's a lot of Sufi thoughts there. Um, and each one of I've talked about social issues like rape and meher. Um, and I've, uh, uh, I have not tried to give any of my lingual ethos um, a foreign name. I have called Kamli a Kamli. I've called Meher Meher. I have called uh, Tasbi Tasbi. Yeah. I have called Kaaba Kaaba. Wonderful. And there are footnotes under uh, yeah. each poem and uh, which explain um, to whatever extent I could in English, what these um, terms mean. And it's beautifully written as well, so which is why I'm going to share a few lines from here as well. You know, the title happens to be Few Friends. Right? Yes, it doesn't matter. Anymore, no more. Ages ago, I learned to grow. Scented flowers were wounds made by friends, not foes. Oozed pus, infecting love with venomous thoughts. My God, you know, that's... 
is this too much? I really need, I, I need this book. So probably, you know, after the show, I'll get it signed up as well. But very quickly towards the end to wrap yes. it up. Do you think that... We are we already at the end? Yeah, we are, yeah, we're already at the end because we have another segment, another guest waiting who needs to uh, talk about fitness and whatnot <laughs> to, so that we are in a fit society and we live in a fit society as well. Very quickly, okay. towards post-colonialism, okay. do you think that we are, when yes. we talk about these gender movements, yes. feminist movements, yes. inclusivity, equality, all of these things, do you think is that how we are going to get to a point where we recognize ourselves? Um, see, with me, feminism, uh, Indo-Pak was fortunately always matriarchal. Okay. Okay. Yep. You know, you look at the history of Harappa, you look at the history of Bihar, you look at the history Even the Mughals? of... the um, Mughals? Not the Mughals, actually. But really? yes, a lot of women had to fight like Gulbadan Begum Sahiba, Akbar's um, uh, puppy. Yep. She had to, uh, aunt, she had to fight for her rights and go for a pilgrimage to Mecca, just like women, uh, as a women convoy. True. So, uh, and then later on it was recognized and all that. Um, but quickly, um, uh, you know, I would like to name few of the foreign authors, like Maya, Maya Angelou. You know, and I want to recite one of her feminists. We just, just like, short yes, yes, very short, very shortly. And she says, I am a woman phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in life. That's the feminist movement. Yeah. Then again, uh, you belong every place, no place at all. The price is high. The reward is great. And on the Liber Statue of Liberty, it's written and it's written by Emma. And she says, give me your tired, your poor, your humbled masses, yearning to breathe free. Wow, thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Madhya, for being with us. we very short in time. Otherwise, you know, we would certainly like you to finish as well. But for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, you know, how I would like to wrap it up is that people from different walks of life will have very different advocacy for different perspectives of life, you know, or how, you know, they see life for themselves as well. And we have seen people that in different eras, people who love that particular era, they will always be writing good about it, uh, intentionally or unintentionally. So it's certainly any individual who's out there and what they are inclined towards. With that, we're actually heading out towards a short way. What I'm inclined towards is being fit and having a healthier society. How can we do that? Well, certainly you need to stay tuned for the next segment. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you so much for staying tuned to PTP Ball. You watch your world this morning. And for everybody who just tuned in, ladies and gentlemen, earlier we were talking about literature and decolonization. Where I still think that, you know, that the conversation was a little dry. But when it comes down to literature, for people who are inclined towards literature, I think it was a wonderful roller coaster ride for me, for them, and for everybody who is out there. But now let's talk about how uh, it is very important for us to be all fit and make sure that our society is a healthier society and that everybody thinks about getting fitter as well. <laughs> now imagine with the advent of artificial intelligence and technology that we see a lot of adverts coming up. And what we kind of witness is that imagine that we... Certainly an application on your cell phone can help you what to eat, what to work out, what exercises to do and how you can maintain a good BMI. Ladies and gentlemen, to talk about it, I'm very lucky that I've been joined by Mr. Shah Rukh Khan, who actually happens to be a consultant dietitian, food and nutrition specialist. So Shah Rukh Khan, it was, uh, it was always my dream to kind of meet you. Thank you so much for Thank joining you us. Thank you so much. Wonderful to have you over here. Thank you so much. I think everybody all over the world wants to see Shah Rukh Khan as well. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Now, let's get started. First of all, you know, every time I get this advert on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on any other application that I'm surfing on that you can get fit with this application, does it really work? Uh, obviously, it works. But if it's with the right knowledge, with the right content, and if it's targeting your goals okay. with the right parameters of your body, because everyone has different parameters like height, weight. So everyone needs a customized uh, workout plan and diet plan. Exactly. So, so if you're giving the right inputs to the app, then you can achieve the best goals. Exactly, because everyone back home, ladies and gentlemen, because it is being said, ever since that I've been going to gym and I've been affiliated with the uh, fitness industry, Everybody keeps on telling me that it's 70% diet and 30% exercise. And everybody will have very 
डिफरेंट माइंड सेट ऑफ दे मदर्स यू नो एट होम नहीं पुत्र रोटी खा नहीं पुत्र परोठा खा नहीं पुत्र केक खा यू नो सो एवरीबॉडी विल हैव अ वेरी डिफरेंट माइंड सेट सो हाउ डू यू थिंक दैट एन एप्लीकेशन कैन हेल्प अस इन सच एन एनवायरनमेंट वेयर वी डू नॉट कुक फॉर आवरसेल्व्स थैंक गॉड अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह यू नो आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल फॉर दैट बट वी डू नॉट कुक फॉर आवरसेल्व्स यू नो वी आर नॉट इनटू ओट मील्स वी आर मोर ऑफ अ सोसाइटी और अ कम्युनिटी विद इज मोर ऑफ चपाती एंड करी एंड आज चिकन चारी पका लो आज बिरयानी पका लो आज पावे पका लो नियारी पका लो भूखी लग गई है या बट यू नो सो डू डू यू थिंक दैट देयर नीड्स टू बी एन एप्लीकेशन व्हिच आई जो अंडरस्टैंड्स द काइंड ऑफ फूड वी कंज्यूम इन दिस रीजन या ऑब्वियसली बिकॉज़ व्हाट द साइंस इज साइंस सेज इफ यू ट्रैक योर कैलोरीज इफ यू ट्रैक योर माइक्रोस योर प्रोटीन कार्ब्स फैट्स मिनरल्स विटामिंस सो दैट इज द साइंस या सो यू नीड टू ट्रैक इट so the best solution is because technology gives the best solution yeah. so the best solution is there is a huge library of food items worldwide so even if you are in uh, america or even if you are in vietnam in somewhere else you can just uh, write or search your food item which yeah. you are eating yeah. and you can track that <laughs> okay that that's a good idea but imagine that you know for people uh, you know whom i have seen very fit alhamdulillah you know either other people who are affiliated with the fitness industry or are either are people who are entrepreneurs or people who are high achievers and what not because imagine that it's a form of self discipline for people who actually make sure that you know they're going to stay fit so you know there's so much of advanced technology out there now for somebody to or probably a person like me where there's so many deals going on you know there's so much work and in the middle of that i'm counting my calories you know so it's it's a little difficult for me <coughs> imagine that for example there is this sensor for diabetic patients why can't we have a sensor placed on our arms which will let us know whether how many calories you know how many carbs have you already consumed does it work like that yes it's it's already working in uh, different western countries as well okay ai based yeah uh, some of the countries have introduced those technologies like you're uh, in front of the camera yep. you're moving you're uh, you're doing some workout exercises and it's calculating your calories okay. even even in fitflex which is based in pakistan fitflex is giving that solution as well if you're watching the content the video content yeah. so it gives uh, you the solution like how accurate is that uh it's it's totally based on the if you talk about the video content it totally based on the simple formula okay what is that formula met value okay. it is based on your height weight and your activity level just how we <coughs> no so it, that's not exactly how we actually kind of calculate our bmi right no uh, you know, bmi is the height is the age and then it's the weight yeah bmi right? is that's something that's how we else. calculate yes yeah. okay that's wonderful and with met value what value do we take out you know what is it going to tell tell us met value basically tells you what's your uh, exaggeration point for, for example the exercise you do yeah. the workout you do it gives the calories you burn all right and uh, the bmi is just an indicator which tells you about the whether you need to reduce weight or not yeah exactly whether you have uh, excessive fat levels all of that okay <laughs> now let's talk about this application that you guys have developed over here in pakistan how does it help anybody and everybody to achieve whatever they want to achieve with their body uh fitflex is the solution which provides the best workout plans okay and how it gives to the user the common user they just need to install the app okay and just watch the video content and do some workout simple is that and there are diet plans as well yeah. but as you said diet plan is a difficult task to do yeah. but what we are giving is tracking the automated so track tracking yeah. yeah you can search your food and track your calories because uh, we are giving the solution in which uh the calories your daily requirement is given by automated process so the application is going to tell me every single day that you know today you have to consume these many calories yeah now imagine all of a sudden my daughter walks in with a pack of chips now i need to eat it right obviously <laughs> she's offering it to me i'll be like daddy please have some okay sure bitte <laughs> why not now imagine so this is where we compromise a lot of calories as well or on a lot of calories yeah. now imagine it's a good idea as well but then do you think that the application is going to suggest me that okay these are the different food types that you can consume to, today for example may it be eggs may it be protein shakes you know may it be oat meals may it be protein just you know probably having a chicken tikka do you think that the app's going to suggest that or we have to do it ourselves yes side by side there is a recommender as well okay which is based on your inputs all right based on your goals so what do you want to achieve uh, so for example i want to achieve a highly muscular body yeah 
with uh, <coughs> probably 100 kgs of body weight. Do you think that I'm given th that option within the application? Yes. Okay, so you know how to kind of do that and go about it. And in how much time, if you are to follow that entire process of that application, in how much time do you think I will have my desired body? It's if I stick to it 100%. This question is very subjective because it's based on, on your different body mind. types. Yeah. Yes. Now, how would the, the, the sole reason why I asked this question was, how would the application know what is my body type? Because you're giving the inputs of your body. But everybody is going to give it now. But imagine that the you know the application won't know you know how my blood kind of uh, how I have a different blood type, how I respond to different fats, yeah. how I respond to different carbs. You know, so, so, so that's exactly something. Uh, there there is some limitations. Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, application is not that much uh, advanced. Digital, advanced or digitized okay. that. Uh, the user cannot give their blood uh, results. Yeah, true. Biochemicals they true. cannot provide to the mobile application. But there are certain apps where you can track your biochemicals as well. Really? Not in the terms of that uh, you, you need to give your blood to the app. <laughs> it's not that way. <laughs> it's just, just put in your results yeah, or reports or something. Exactly. Yeah. You just have to put your AB positive, you know, this and that and yeah. all of that and, you know, your, your blood CP profile probably. Even there are di diabetic apps, which is for diabetic patients, which track like if, if you have your food in your hand or at your okay, table. So let, let's make it simpler, you know, so I'll make it simpler for you. How do you think that because you spoke and you said that, you know, that it's really subjective. So, for example, you know, out of 100. How efficient do you think this application is if you follow it 100% to get to your desired goal? Do you think for some it will be 100%? Do you think some for some it will be 50%? How efficient is it going to be for people from different walks of life? But on average, I think uh, 70 to 75% it's, it's going to it's work. work yeah. Really? Because most of the time people only dream about having abs, right? Do yeah. you have abs, by the way? Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, that's <laughs> wonderful. It's, it's very evident as well. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I think for somebody who actually happens to be an example and exhibits the same muscular body, you know, which they're talking about, I think that the application might be working because these are the brains behind that. Now, how do you think as a consultant dietitian, you're given your input within that application and how it's going to work? Um, as a consultant dietitian, the best approaches, the best knowledge for the, uh, according to the consumers, we we done surveys, we done researches before uh, making this app. Okay. So according to the uh, marketplace, according to the consumer perception, we developed all those modules. All right. To consider how many different modules are there? There are uh, basically two modules, basically, okay. but uh, we can consider it into three. Okay. But one is content-based, video-based uh, workouts, training plans, and one is GIF based just to make your uh, muscle movement right. All right. Like, so whether the angles are correct or yes. not, so that you d you do not get yourself injured. So and do you think that anybody can use this application? For example, I'm a beginner, right? And you know, so I've gotten all the weights at home, and now you know, I, I turn yeah, on the application and see if these works are workouts. Do you think it's for any beginner? Because do you think that the application will tell th tell them that today, okay, you need to use one kg dumbbells after a month, probably six kg dumbbells. You yes. know, so you know. Constantly, you're progressing towards your goal. Do you think that's how the application works? Yes, we uh, we ask user to give the input that uh, with th three basic inputs, like he's on the beginner phase, he's on moderate phase, and advanced level. All right. So we are asking them if you're advanced, then you should uh, adapt the advanced workouts. All right. So so that's <coughs> wonderful. And do we have to pay like a monthly subscription or something yeah. of that sort? Yeah. Uh, how much is the monthly subscription? <laughs> <laughs> monthly subscription right now is for 100 rupees. That's it? For Pakistan uh, market. Use, yeah. Right. But it's different for uh, And the name of the application happens to be? Fitflex. Fitflex. Yes. All right. So anybody and everybody who's out there, if you're looking to get fit and so that you can actually flex kind of, you know, I think that's how you flex. But if you guys are looking to, you know, kind of get fit and be on that journey and people I think for you, you know, if you are to kind of start for beginners who are not going to the gym, I think you can start from here onwards. 100 rupees a month is not something that is, is too much because imagine that these days if you are to kind of hire a personal trainer, it's, uh, minimum I think it starts from 25 to 30,000 rupees yeah. a month and you're going to get 12 or 15 sessions. So please make sure. Very quickly towards the end, you know, so do we, does the application differentiate in between, in between a man and a woman? And do you think that there are certainly adaptive workouts for different genders? 
uh, yes, there is a differentiation between the gender, okay. but um, in most cases, uh, we don't have differentiation of, uh, on the basis of gender. Okay. Because uh, workouts uh, are mostly with the same. Uh, oh, but workouts, workouts are usually obviously the same, but you know that the variation in the weight is something yeah. which will actually kind of have an impact on the kind of body that you're going to get towards the end of the entire package that you have paid 100 rupees for, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, yes, the, the weight differentiation is there. All yeah. right. So, I think that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Shah Rukh Khan, for being Thank with us. So Lovely much. to be in conversation with you. For everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, imagine. And I keep on urging, I keep on requesting to each and every one of you. And I've seen a lot of people who procrastinate, a lot of people who are lazy. Please don't do that. See, you've got to be there for your kids. You've got to be there for your parents. You've got to be there for your family. Make sure that you're fit. You know, this minimum investment that you're going to make, maybe on an application, maybe you going to the gym, maybe you swimming, maybe you trekking, maybe you walking, running, whatever it is, whatever you like. The only request, our humble, simple request to you is, Please make sure that you take out time for yourself every single day. Just 45 minutes, do your workout, feel fresh. Imagine that you'll get so many newer ideas. Imagine that you will be a better person. Imagine that you will start to enjoy yourself. Imagine that the body you live in is going to help you achieve all your goals. Ladies and gentlemen, my humble request is to just keep on telling you guys to stay fit because being fit is being on a very different energy level. And always thank Allah if you are able to exercise and to work out. There are a lot of people who f uh, unfortunately want to work out but cannot because of their physical issues or challenges that they incur or they occur. Or you, So I think everybody needs to kind of come together on this and everybody in a household needs to push everybody else. So I keep on telling my sisters, my sisters keep on telling me, my parents keep on telling me, I keep on telling my parents that we really need to stay fit and that's how Alhamdulillah we can all be fit. Now, until next time ladies and gentlemen, look after yourselves. And yeah, it's a good morning. Allah Hafiz, remember us all in your prayers. Bye-bye.